Yo, this is Trey Williams right here with my man. You know I got sold.com. He knows he got sold. <laughs> Alright Trey, so I want to take it back to your origins of music. You know, oh, I know I was reading you originally from Florida, came to New York to try to get your break. You know, what was the whole situation like there? I came to get a break because I was broke. Yeah. You know man, I knew that coming from Florida at that point in time, in order for me to get where I wanted to be, I had to come either here or LA and this was a lot closer, a lot easier and I met a dude who actually brought me up here. And and you know, when you first get here, the first dream that you got is like, you know, if you coming from Florida, you know, let's do the Apollo. Like, you know, if I do the Apollo, I'm going to be a star. You know, so I got a chance to do that, you know, which it didn't make me a star. <laughs> you know, but it did, it did give me a, it did give me a little ego boost. It did help me out. It, it let me know that I belong. And that's the, you know, the thing about this music business, you got to know you belong in it. And that's the only because so many people have discouraged you and, and this, that, and the third. So after I got here, man, and after, you know, weaning myself through the through the weeds, I jumped on the Petey Pablo track, you know, the Diary of a Center. Me and Petey Pablo hooked up and we did that for his for his album and that was the first real time that I was nationwide. You know, and that right there really, really amped me to hear you said The first time you can go in the store and pick up a CD that you own, it really, really fuels you. So after that, I, I started full blast recording, man. And me and Styles P hooked up on numerous joints, like constantly. And I got to say that Styles P was like one of the major contributors to me even being in the business, man. Because whatever I asked him to do, he did. And whatever he asked me to do. But he constantly made sure my name stayed out there. Right. Which led me, as you know, to sign a deal with Nas. Yeah, and how did that situation come about? How was that whole situation with Nas? You know, I was I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I had I had been going through numerous contra contract issues. You know, who I'm going to sign with this, sign with this. And, you know, it's all... If it don't materialize in front of you, Understand that it's not real. No matter what nobody say to you, if the if it does not, if the ink don't dry, no deal is real. It's not. So as I was coming from one office, who I I didn't know if the deal was gonna go through or not. I got a phone call from Mike Brinkley, uh, which was at that point in time he was Nas' uh, president of Airwell. Now he's the manager of Big Sean, and um. Mike called me and said, listen, Nas want to sign you. I was like, really? Like, okay, what a, what a, what a gag at night, all right? You know, I thought I was being punk for a minute. Yeah. So he said, nah, seriously, uh, where, can we, where can we meet up with you? I said, what you want me to do, come to Queens? Like, what you want me to do? He said, nah, where you live? He said, live in Yonkers. He said, give me the address. So he gave me the I gave him the address and I begot Damn, if I looked out the window and the black cars was pulling up, you know, so I knew right then I was like, oh my goodness, this is real. Yeah. You know, so I talked to Son and he let me know he wanted me to be with him and he didn't have to say it twice. You know, once he said he wanted me with him, I was all down and you know, I was with him. So after that, after I did that and signed that deal, you know, I just knew after that it was, it was easy money, but right. you know, it was a struggle still. Right. You know, when you were with Nas, you know, the label situation, you were working on your debut, um, Death of My Soul, if I'm not mistaken. So what do you remember about soul. working on the album and creating that one? The Death of My Soul, what I love most about it, but that I, they allowed me to be me. You know, they, it, it was it was let Trey do what Trey wanted to do. It was, you know, nobody was sending me in a certain direction to sound like this. You know, this was the hot song at that time, sound like this. So this right. was the hot song. It was basically, you know, do you. And I basically was, you know, wrote the whole thing. <laughs> So that that was really really an ego boost for me too because for somebody like Nas to say just go do your thing and you know but like I said if the ink don't dry man if, you know you it, it, it ain't it's just an idea you know depth of my soul was just an idea because it never was materialized you know because Nas started going through various issues with Def Jam over the you know over his you know contractual obligations and things of that nature. But I do appreciate the utmost that he gave me the opportunity to be in front of millions and millions, 
you know, I went from being a dude, you know, very few new to being known all over the world just by this dude saying my name everywhere he go, you know. And that right there, man, you can't, you can't buy that. You know, there's no amount of money that can give you that type of publicity, that type of notoriety. You know, so, man, I was grateful, you know, grateful that I was even allowed to walk in that light. Because many don't even get to walk in his light. You know, and like I said, so we did the song, Let There Be Light On on the hip hop is dead and you know that was why it wasn't a single I don't know but it definitely was classic right, sure. you know so that was that was a I gotta say that that was very a high and a low point in my career high being with him a low with not the depth of my soul not coming out right okay. you know and eventually after the Zion situation you looked at what the revelations and put out a couple albums with them talk about that whole situation well I actually linked up after I left Niles after the contract was contract was over I decided that you know I wander around and see what I could find and I linked up with Bob Perry and, and uh, we decided to work on some things together and through working with him I had, I, we both had, the, you know, the notion, the idea that, you know, let's do something different with soul music. Let's not just make CDs. Let's get a band. Let's let's make it live and let's do it the way it should be done. And, you know, we linked up. We pulled in the Revelations, which was really, you know, a, a, a um, house band that was bad. It was bad, you know. And we got down and we started making this music, man. And we. We we made we made some really really good music, man, and that's that's the best thing that I can I got out of that was we made great music, timeless music, you know. Even it's time that I do songs that nobody know, but because the songs are so powerful, people love them, you know. And it's an honor and a privilege to work with them dudes, you know, to even get get that project to where it was that fast. Right. You, know. you had a couple albums there, I believe the last one in 2011. So, you know, what have you been up to since? You know, what do you got going on now? Well, you know, I I decided that um that it was actually time for Trey to be just Trey. You know, because I mean, throughout all I've done, and as long as I've been in this business with the mixtapes and the, and the features and the revelations and Nas and Styles. It's never been a Trey Williams project. Right. It's never been a, a, a quote of Trey Williams CD. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say, well, the Revelations, that's you. You sung everything on it. But it don't sound scan Trey Williams. You know what I mean? So I decided that it was actually time for me to do that. Right. So I, you know, besides doing my shows and, you know, all over and staying on that stage and, keeping the bills paid because at the end of the day, man, if the lights go out, we got a problem. Right. <laughs> you know, so so we make sure we keep the lights on and we and we you know we tour around and I, I do my shows. But I've been i I've been slowly but surely putting together the depth of my soul volume two. And they're gonna ask me, well what happened to volume one? It's in the vault. Don't worry about that. One. <laughs> you know what I mean? And one day Volume one will come out, you know, at some point in time. But I'm 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 working on the depth of my soul, volume two. Okay. You know, and 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 I know it's interesting. To think, how you go from volume? You never put out volume one. You know what I mean? But for those who know me, those who know my plight, know where I come from. They understand what volume one is, and it never, you know, never can. But two will. Yeah. So I'm doing it the same way, same music, live, soul, you know, and, and, and really staying with the with the grassroots that I put together with the revelations that I'm gonna continue now. Mm -hmm. I feel no reason to deviate from you know anything that I've done, you know, but it just allows my name to stand alone. Right. You know, and I and I think it's time for that and I think I'm I'm due for that. Definitely. Definitely. So uh, that's all we had. Anything you want to add? You know, I, I definitely want to thank those that who follow me with Nas, those that follow me before Nas, those that follow me with the revelations, and 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 hope to God they continue to, you know, ride with me as as I take this new journey, 
you know, because that's what it is about. Life is all about the journeys. It ain't, you know, it ain't where you've been, it's where you're trying to go and, and how you're going to get there. And I'm going to take my time and I'm going to get there because I didn't do this. You know, this is all, you know, God put me here. I, I messed up my chances so many times. So I know that this, this chance right now ain't on my time because I had my times. And I decided that I wasn't going to do what I needed to do to push forward. But now we're going to push forward because we're on his time now. And we're going to enjoy it. We're going to ride with it. We're going to do it stress-free. And it's going to work out. You know, and I want to thank you for even coming out here to, to give me a little light, you know? For sure.